Hi folks, we're gonna do a little lawnmower video today. It won't be a long one. I'm checking out a lawnmower for a friend. He said it doesn't work, so I'm gonna have a quick look at it. Come with me. Well, I haven't been well for the past uh, week or so. I've had this bleeding chest infection now, which is uh, dragging on. I'm coughing up loads of stuff, loads of green stuff over the last three days, but uh, you don't want to hear about that. I've not been taking anything for it because it started off, oh, I think when I done one of my first videos, I think it was a few, well, it was a week ago when it started off outside and I sneezed. I was doing a couple, I thought I had a little bit of a summer cold. And uh, it's obviously developed since then, so that's what's happened there. That's why I've been a little bit low key. And whether you probably realised or not, I did a, uh, yesterday I've done a, like a tall restoration uh, re rescue video on uh, a lawnmower. Well, I didn't actually say anything in it. Some of you liked it, some of you didn't like it. But that's going to be a new type of uh, uh, video that I'm going to be doing. Not on this channel, this channel's still going to be the same, don't forget. Uh, with everybody joining in every now and again and showing you all different sorts of things. But um, them sort of restoration or restore videos or rescue videos if you call them that. I'm going to be putting them on my Retro Hacks channel where there's no talking and it's just sort of speeded up a little bit and I zoom through what I'm actually doing without any talking so to speak. So if you're interested in that or restoration videos along them lines, do go over to Retro Hacks. I haven't uploaded anything yet. So I put the first one on this channel as you see which was the Lawnmower uh, Rescue, Old Lawnmower Rescue I think it was called. And uh, the reason why I put it on this channel is one that I didn't do a video yesterday because I wasn't feeling all that and um, I was a bit breathless and a bit just out of it to be honest with you so I didn't really want to talk when I done that video so I just chose to put it on this channel so I know a lot of you said you weren't too happy with it or you didn't like that sort of style but uh, there are a lot of people out there who love them type of videos and I actually quite enjoyed making it as well so yeah they're going to be going on whatever channel retro hack so if you're interested in more restoration videos of that kind pop over there and hit the subscribe button and don't forget to ring that little bell hit that little bell next to the subscribe button as well because uh, then you'll get notifications that I've just uploaded a new video so uh, again I don't know whether YouTube are playing about with things at the moment but I'm not seeing any comments pop up whenever you people are commenting I'm having to go into each individual video at the moment and actually go through the comments manually because I'm just not getting notified for some reason. There's something in the settings which is a problem. I've tried contacting YouTube and all you get to do is put through to a knowledge base and uh, their forum which I've had no reply on there either. So just bear with me if I've not answered your question or I haven't seen your question, that would be the reason. But up until then, let's have a look at Paul's mower. He brought it around for me the other day. I've not even had a chance to look at it yet. I know it's got a Briggs and Stratton engine on. So we're going to go from cold and we'll have a look at it and try and sort this one out and get it running for him. Let's come and have a look at it. Right, well, it's obviously an old... Is it a fly mount? It's, it's a McCulloch branded under Electrolux, but it's, it's got a Briggs and Stratton engine on it. So I'm just going to try and start it first of all by pressing the push to prime. Right, it's got fuel in it. Plug leads on. Let's give it a pull, see what happens. He told me it wasn't running. That started first pull, although it's not running very well. <coughs> I would imagine that we've got a problem with the uh, diaphragm and carb in it. It's on the verge of hunting up and down, so I'm going to take the carb off. I'm going to check the air filter because it might have a restriction where it's possibly <coughs> been tipped up the wrong way. So let's get it on the table and we'll have a look. seen better days this one so first things first I'm gonna get me a little tool kit out my little socket set and a few screwdrivers and a pair of pliers just to have a look I always like to check underneath first of all yeah that's all right let's go and get some tools 
right there you go as you've probably seen by my other video i've got the same toolkit out basically and we're going to repair this lawnmower as well so that's our basic toolkit <coughs> and the first thing i'm going to do is take the air filter off again we don't know whether it's been tipped up the wrong way it's obviously a running issue so we know we're getting spark there so we've really not got to really investigate the plug well that's okay look at that look it's nice and dry and clean so we know that's okay and looking at the carb the springs are all okay to show you as you can see the springs are connected correctly there's the little governor vein there which is moving freely and you've got the little spring there and the big spring the little spring and the big spring both connect to that little clip on top of the governor arm vein and the little spring connects to this little arm there as you can see and the big spring connects to this here on the bit that moves up and down so a lot of people do tend to bend these up and down and bend them out bend them but uh, they can you can straighten these up just by sort of bending it down again that one sort of stays in that position this has been bent a little bit to be honest with you but uh, we're going to go with that for the moment there's nothing really wrong with that so we know we've got push to prime as you can see fuel's going through there so we haven't got a problem with the primer bulb so our problem seems to be with the diaphragm and gasket which sits underneath the carb which is bolted to the fuel tank so we've got the two bolts to undo there one at the front which is 10 mil or 38 or 13 mil there and a half or a half inch depending on what mower you've got so let's take them two screws out now get this carb off right well we've got the carb off that's going to be the offending article but one other thing that can cause probably slow revving is that uh, I think I mentioned it in one of my other videos as well is that you can have something underneath the recoil cover which is stopping the governor arm from moving freely so I did say in that video take off even though we've got a carb issue do take this off anyway because you may find that there could be an issue with regards to all the rubbish underneath here that's congested and that can make the lawnmower heat up and overheat so just it's worth doing it's only these three little 10 mil screws so get it off and have a look in there right just lift off now in this case we're okay as you can see that governor arm is moving freely so we know that isn't the problem but that's just something else we've ruled out it's worth checking and also we can clean all behind there now because on top of that carb tube the inlet tube there is some rubbish there now I'm just going to give this a little blowout now with the airline. You may not have a blowout uh, an airline to do that with. There is loads of crap in there. I'm not going to send it back to it like that. I'll give this a blowout first of all. So let me just do that. Right, so there you go. I hope you can see that with all these repair videos that I produce, that they're all pretty similar. So in other words, you should be able to glean from this the sort of thing which you possibly could come up against. And every time it's very similar. So again, before I go any further with the carb, I'm just gonna um, give it a clean down. Just by giving it a little dab with some old stale fuel. Again, that's what this is in, the, in this case. I normally use white spirit as I said before in other videos but uh, some people obviously can't watch all the videos or don't watch all the videos and they miss this, th these little comments I'm making so I will repeat it you might hear me repeat myself over and over again but uh, it's only to get the point across that uh, if you do miss it so I'm just giving this a bit of a brush down now I don't want none of this crap going inside the small Venturas of the carb, so to speak. So, I'll just give it a good wipe down. It always amazes me how well they clean up when you see them first of all, and they're absolutely filthy. Look, they clean up pretty well, don't they? All the time. That's just compressed air and some old stale fuel or white spirit. 
So right, let's now take this carb off using the Phillips screwdriver. Again, the lawnmower was running. He, he told me that it wasn't running, so you, you never know exactly what the symptoms are. So if you just have a set procedure for checking when you uh, come to get these, because nine times out of ten, when you're repairing old lawnmowers, which you're buying for spares or repairs, you've got no idea what the matter with them is. So, And even if they're running. Or you might have a lawnmower that's running and it's got a bent crank. So that's another problem which uh, you, you'd come across as well. Although I've not really covered that. I've had a few of bent cranks, but um, I've not really covered it because I don't believe at this moment in time that it's good to show people uh, redneck ways to straighten cranks. You see people on YouTube hitting them with hammers to try and straighten them. There is a special tool you can buy, but uh, I was thinking about making one of them crank straightening tools while it's still in the engine, but that may come later on. But uh, right, let's get these, uh, I've got the screws out now. Let's just lift this off. Seems to be a lot of fuel in here. It's like the gasket's not been doing its job properly and I can see straight away that the gasket is very puckered. I don't know if you can see that there, can you? Around where that, just above where that little flap is, it's uh, all puckered and that, that, that little flap opens and closes a valve, that flap. So that's very, very puckered in that area, which is obviously causing, in my eyes, our running problem. So I've got that off of there now. And I'm just going to peel this gasket off. Now these can either come off easy, the gaskets, or they can uh, rip or whatever. This one's come off in one piece. Now you'd be very tempted to throw the gasket and diaphragm away, but I would suggest that with the old gaskets, keep hold of them and put them in a little drawer somewhere. Because I've had people sometimes say to me, they fitted a new diaphragm and gasket, put it on, bolted it down, tightened all the screws up, and when they've got to start the lawnmower, they've seen petrol come seeping out of the side of where the car bolts on. And they've tried tightening the screws a bit more, that's not done the job. Because these plastic carburetor bases here sometimes can warp. And very difficult to try and straighten or flatten something like that. <coughs> so what I've found is that um, sometimes if you put a second gasket on, now you don't want to rob another new kit obviously because you want your gasket and diaphragm kits come in, they come in pairs. You don't want to start nicking the, the gasket out of another set and you're just left with the diaphragm. So if you keep the old gaskets, whenever you get a possible problem like that with one of these leaking around the edge, just get the old gasket, take it back off again, and where the gasket sits on top, lay the, another one on top and then try it, and that may cure your leak. Uh, if that don't happen, then you probably have to change the carb or whatever because the plastics, these plastics do warp. In, uh, over a period of time they can warp I've had about two or three of them in all my years of doing them so that's just a little tip for you there keep the old gaskets in case you do get a leaky one with, when you fit a new diaphragm and gasket right I'm going to go and get a, a new diaphragm and gasket now and I'll give this a quick blow out and uh, spray with carb cleaner in fact I'll do that now while I'm waiting you ain't got to go mad with this it's basically just a just to ensure there's no varnish on them. You mostly get that with older ones that have been standing about, they, get, they varnish up a little bit inside. So I'll leave that like that. I'm gonna go and get a gasket, I'll see you in a minute. <coughs> right, okay, ah, that's better. Right, again, I get many questions, as you probably know. I've got loads of blinking generators and Honda engines around my feet at the moment. That's another thing I've got to get around to sorting out one day, but. Uh, not right at this moment. A lot of people ask me where I get my gaskets and diaphragms from. Now I've tried multiple different sources, as you know, right from uh, uh, the worst ones that you can buy from China, actually directly from China, when you see the ones that curled up before in my other videos. At the moment, I'm having uh, a lot of success with these ones here. These come from Garden Hire Spares Limited. They've got a website, and uh, although they're made in China, these are the actual gaskets and the, the, the writing that comes with them, if you can see that there. They provide them in these little clear plastic bags. Obviously not everything from China is bad. I have a lot of parts which come from China which are uh, very decent parts and these uh, have been proven to be working fine at the moment. So uh, that's where I get my parts from. And not only that, they also do a good supply of other pairs. Oh, hold on, my phone's going. Sharon, hold on. 
Hello, baby. Oh, right, okay. Hold on, sure. This phone don't work all that well. Yeah, carry on, baby. Uh, hold on, let me put you on loudspeaker, baby, because uh, you're, you're on camera at the moment. Hold on. Hello? I said we'll pick the keys up Thursday. Oh, right, okay, fair enough. Yeah, and then I said to Tracy, I'll take her around there first, you know, because she's not seen it in the kids, have I? <coughs> Where are you now, baby? On Castle. On Castle, baby? Can you just say hello to the subscribers, everyone? Is it shout out? No, we didn't do shout out Sunday this week, Sharon, did we? Shout out Monday. It's not, because I'm not well, am I? I'll give shout out. I'm only out here now doing Paul's lawnmower with Paul uh, Kia. And we're doing his lawnmower, doing a little video on it. But I pulled it, it started first time, baby. Oh, so you got the lawnmower tough, didn't you, love? Well, yeah, I only had a look at it and it started, but I'm doing a carbon diaphragm on it anyway. So you're going to say hello to everybody? Hello, everybody. I'm going to go now, so I'm going in a shop. All right then, baby. I'm going to go because I'm in the middle of a rant. All right, then. I'm All not right. really, I'm not ranting, baby. All right, then. Bye, baby. Bye, Sharon. 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 Bye, Sharon
Right, whack your screws back in. You're going to see this on time lapse. Right, okay. Let's that back on. Put our little tube back on. Our little breather tube. Close up there. <coughs> Let's put it back on the lawnmower. Right, okay. So hopefully that's the repair done now. I'm gonna do two more what I call courtesy checks, and that's gonna I'm gonna check the spark plug and also check the um the oil as well just to make sure that's alright. I do notice with the spark plug that it's a little bit loose on there, so I might close that up with the uh, pair of pliers that I've showed you in the last video. But uh, we'll have a look first. That that terminal can open in there, in fact I'm just gonna give it a close up now. I do like to hear that snap into place when you put it back on. There we go, it's tight now, look. So little little modification like that can stop the lawnmower from cutting out. So just something to be aware of. That's in and out nicely because we've got the little notch there. As you know, a lot of people get this spark plug lead caught underneath the lid when they put this cover back on and they don't realise that there's a little gap there or a little cutout for it. Then we go and get the spark plug spanner and we'll take the spark plug out. Now, I don't know what shops charge. Well, I say I don't know what shops charge. I came across the other week, someone had lost on the, on the street. It's very black and sooty look, so that indicates, yeah, we had a problem with the carburetor. Uh, someone left two receipts from a lawnmower shop, and the two receipts were itemized, detailed A4 sheets of paper of two lawnmower services from someone. One was a Briggs & Stratton one, one was a Honda lawnmower. Now the Briggs & Stratton service, I think they changed the carb diaphragm and gasket. I think they changed the plug and that was it. Oh, I think they changed the oil as well. And they charged £85 for this person to have a service on one of these things for the uh, items I've just told you about. The Honda lawnmower was a £125 service. I can't remember that one. I should have kept them. I was going to actually photocopy them and uh, put them in my video, but I forgot over the the last few weeks and then it just disappeared I don't know where they've gone to probably got thrown away so yeah 85 pounds to service one of these from a shop <coughs> that's including the parts mind you but I mean those of you who service these know that parts doesn't necessarily have to be very very dear right I'm happy with that let's take that spark uh, let's take that old dipstick out and again this this is something that you won't get in a a dealership for example now you can see there straight away it's overfilled look at that look it's coming yet halfway out of dipstick again so i'm gonna have to take some of that out because that again can be sucking in oil and then making it smoke so i'm just going to tip it up and get some out now again i know i do tip them up but uh paul stamp uses a great tool it's like a suction vacuum tool which they come uh, sucks the oil out i will get one i just haven't got around to getting one yet so until i do i'm gonna have to do it like this I'm not going to drain it all out. Now in an ideal world, I'll change the oil in this, but um, I haven't got a never ending supply of oil, unfortunately. And uh, it does cost money, so if uh, Paul wants to do it himself afterwards, I'm sure he watches my videos, and after that he could probably fix it himself now. So, uh, anyway. That's another story. I'll just uh, make sure that it's at the right level now. As I say, overfilling one of these is bad, as if not worse, than underfilling one. So, it's just something to be aware of. Don't go overfilling your lawnmower. Yeah, just on the top line now, so I'm happy with that. Right, put that back in. Yeah, look, that's how much overfilled it was, look. There you go. Anyway, boys. Oh. Just tighten these bleeding handles up and all. That's a bit better. Right, okay. Right, 
let's try it. Now you remember it started up all right, but it was hunting, wasn't it? It started a hunt. And it was a bit boggy. Let's see how this goes. There we go, nothing wrong with that whatsoever. But there you go, I'm sure you realise that after watching a few of these videos on these engines, it's a pretty straightforward job and I'm sure you could probably tackle it as well. It's not rocket science, it's a learnable skill and at the end of the day it could make you a bit of extra pocket money. Treat it as a hobby, you'll have fun with it. Alright then there's another one going now, I'll see you in the next video. And don't forget to check out Retro Hacks, or re uh, at least subscribe to Retro Hacks, my other channel as I'm going to be doing more of the silent restore videos or, or restoration videos on there and uh, these videos on this channel are going to carry on as normal. Hope to be back with you soon, I've got loads of videos still to do. We've got the Trotter lawnmower to finish off now. I'm going to be doing some plating for the uh, new plating kit which I've got. We've got the Trotter van which needs to go back together. We've got the Triumph Claim which still needs to go back together. We've got some welding on the transit van to do again and we've also got the TGB moped as well. Those are the outstanding things. We're going to try and crack on with them as well as produce our other stuff as well, our family vlogs and shout outs and stuff like that. Thanks very much, see you in the next video and until then, bye for now.